the two pieces of three mil stainless plate we've just cut out. I've put a couple of little tack welds on them, tacked them together, and I've marked out for eight holes. I could have put these holes in with a plasma, but you normally have to clean them up with a drill, and sometimes cutting stainless makes it go really hard. So I've just marked it out by hand, and I'm going to drill them in there. This goes onto the end of the burner can like that, and that's what seals the end of the burner can. Obviously that end cap is removable, and the flame tube is fastened onto there like that. So the flame tube goes in, that goes on, and that seals up that end. In the centre of here, there's also, it'll be a fitting, it'll be probably 3 8 BSP stainless steel, which will take the, the jet that lets the gas into the engine. There'll also be a spark plug hole, a bush drilled and tapped, which I think is 14 by 1.25 spark plug thread. So I'm going to go on the miller machine, drill these holes, and then we'll see if we can get a little bit of stainless steel welding done. Having access to the plasma cutter obviously makes cutting these out easy, but I've done plenty using an angle grind and drill, chain drilling. It's not the ultimate to have a plasma cutter to do this sort of work, it just makes it a lot easier and quicker. I use these clamps for holding various things. I'm just going to hold it by hand. I'm only going to run a small hole. I bought this one at a car boot sale. It's interesting because this one's actually got pivot and jaws. Old fashioned hand clamp that are really handy with the kit, and you often do find them at car boot sales. I'm sure I'm not going to hit the vase, but I want plenty of support. That looks pretty good. Excellent. I've got some new cutting paste to try on stainless steel because stainless steel is a pain in the arse to drill. In fact, it's just a pain in the arse. The only thing I like about stainless steel is welding it. And even then it can be a pain in the arse. I've got this stuff to try. Don't know if it's any good, it's supposed to be, so we'll, we'll give it a go and see. Slow that down a little bit. Make sure that was fairly painless through there. I need a brush up. Use all the acid brushes up. I think that horrible noise is starting to come back on this milling machine. That's doing all right there. A nice even pressure on here, not too much, but not, not playing with it, just feeding it through. If you get stainless hot when you're drilling this, really hot, you have problems. It goes really hard, or at least some of it does, depend on the grain of stainless. I think this is 316 stainless. It's the grain of stainless I can, I can sort of find and get there. Uh, I can pick it up anyway in small quantities. I'm going to put these holes through at 6.5, so I've got clearance for the 6mm bolts. I might actually weld the nuts on the back, I'm not quite sure. We'll see how it goes. Doesn't like that at all. And that is a sharp drill. I'll try a cobalt drill a little bit slower. Not quite a lot slower. That's better. That's, that's nice.
you don't try holding this like that, it's just not a good idea. I think there's more injuries done on it, like a pedal to a pillister. Pillister! I think there's more injuries done on a pedal, pedestal drill, or a bench drill than it is on any other machine. Uh, it looks so innocent going around there. Friend of mine actually pulled his finger end off on this very machine, drilling quarter inch holes. So you've got to have a, a great deal of respect for the machine you're using. The swarf is also nasty, sharp, especially off stainless. Nice, steady, even pressure, and that's going through there very nicely. And slow it down a little touch more. Right, we'll derag them and that's who's done. Good. Counter sinks. I still haven't done the Luvio one yet. I always bring the, the mill up until I've got like some pushing on the handle nice and comfortably. You don't want to be uh, behind here. Make it easy for yourself. It's a nice little, little counter sink on each one. I've started doing close-up shots on quite a few of my videos now on machining videos and people keep asking for them so I'm going to carry on doing them. Interesting to see things working close up, especially when you break a tool and you do it in really sort of spectacular fashion. Right. I'm going to put a hole in the centre for the the fitting is going to take the gas inlet pipe. I'm going to put a 20mm hole in because I've got some 22mm stainless bar that I'm going to make the fitting out of. I managed to find the, the brush so I can put some of the, the black stuff on. I quite like it, it seems to be working quite well. Once again we're running slow, it's running about 300 RPM, which is more than quick enough for a trying to do. It's quite painless. In fact, that was very painless. Right, I've gone down a couple of gears. This is actually a 19.75mm drill, so that's what size I'm going to be at the hole because I know it is a good drill. Give it every chance of surviving. I admit I'm very impressed with this cut and paste, it works extremely well. I bought this chuck quite a while ago, it was quite an expensive chuck and it's proved very very good, it's really accurate both on the inside and the outside, set of jaws, I'm really pleased with it once it's set up on the lathe it repeats itself time and time again I've got a piece of bar here, stainless bar, I've got no idea what great stainless it is 
it's a great stainless I found in it. The friends engineer and skip, so I'm gonna use this. It's obviously machinable because he's been machining it. I'm gonna cut this end off, cut it to size and drill it and tap it. I'm gonna use 3 BSP for the adapter, then it means I can put bigger or smaller fittings in to my heart's content. I'll put a little bit closer on this chuck because the first thing I want to do is actually part it off just to get shot of that, that end. This parting tool here is actually on, on borrowed time. It's had a, a couple of near misses, but it still is working. Off by there. Right, this is running at 130 RPM. We'll give it a try. And that is cutting nice, that's a bit of nice material. At least as far as machining goes. Very nice indeed. I like it. I like it a lot. It's obviously no use for a, a critical job. Because I've got no idea what it is, but I'm sure for a, a little home built gas turbine it'll be fine. Looks like the part of here might survive to machine the that year. This is a very nice bar, the machine is very nice indeed. Nice. Just started to change this tune a little bit there. A little warning sign. You don't get very many warning signs with parting tools. Normally one then the bastard snaps off. Testing what it is drilling it. It's a cheap and cherry bang road step drill, crowbar step drill. By step, I mean it's a, a speedy shank drill. I wanted to set, but the fast is only sent as one. This is nice and cool because of the a high speed C2 and a ball that you have from it all. So it certainly has been a good thing. That's a tool with stainless to get the nasty stringy bastards. I'm going to start the thread with the tape on top. Use a collar chuck and the tail slug because it gets a much better grip than an ordinary, ordinary chuck. You can also reverse the lathe and it won't loosen off. Then cut and paste on this. It may spin in the chuck, I'm not sure I will do it. Try and see what happens. Stop now and put the parallel tap in. Reverse the lead. <laughs> the 
is 3 8 BSB parallel. I think that's called 3 8 gas, I'm not sure, but a parallel thread. Starting to cut there now. Like it's starting to spin in the chuck there anyway. Going through quite nicely. It's going through very nicely indeed. <coughs> Means whatever fitting I put in there, I can sleep it down to eight or quarter or makes it sort of worse there. Just put a nice little shamper on that edge. Looks better, it's also a lot safer with no sharp edges for your hands. Right, so that plug goes into there with a nice little TIG weld around it. And I'm also going to put another one on the side with a spark plug in, and possibly another one with a blank in because you never know. You might want to run this on kerosene. I want to do all the welding and all the drilling in one go. I've got a nice little inverter TIG welder from our tech 160 amp inverter TIG welder that runs over 13 amp supply. I've got to do a review on that. Well, I haven't got to, but I'm going to. And I'll use that to do the welding with. So that's a little bit more progress made.